got a couple of apologies to make first of all. Before I get started on that, I've got some really exciting books, but before I get going, um, I do have a couple of apologies to make. The first one being that um, there was, as it stands, no video up last week, um, and I'm not sure if this one is going to be up this week or whether I'm going to end up having to upload it next week, um, and that's because my internet has gone down. I don't live in a town or a city or anything, the area I live in is very rural, and um, so when things go wrong with the internet, it can take quite some time to get it back up and working so it has been down for a week and I'm supposed to be having an engineer here today but I've heard nothing and um, he hasn't turned up yet so I'm not sure if I'm going to have internet this week to upload this video. So when you eventually do see this, however long it's been, I do apologise, it's been out of my hands. And second of all, I'm going to apologise about the lighting because um, every time that it seems that the sunshine comes out I get my camera out and the clouds cloud back over again so lighting isn't the best but with all of that in mind, I'm just going to crack on and hope that this is up really quickly and hope that I can manage to get this up either today or tomorrow. And if not, it's going to be hopefully not next week or the week after. I didn't even think of that, but that's a possibility. So, yeah, let's just crack on with the book haul. I have a few books I bought myself, four books I bought myself, and I've got two that have been very kindly sent to me by the publishers. So we'll talk about the books that I bought myself first of all, and I got this one, which I was very excited about when I saw it, um, The Girl Before. I really like the cover of this, which is what drew me to it. It was sort of the minimalist look of the house, and when you look closer, you can really see just how minimalistic the house actually is. So it's really quite sort of calming but sterile and a little bit creepy so it's a thriller I love thrillers and um, the storyline goes that um, there is a woman moves into a house and it is in London and the house is a minimalist style house and she has to jump through loads of hoops to get into the house and there's like 200 rules she has to follow and she has to um, agree that she will follow every single one of these rules and sort of respect the house the way the house is intended to be lived in and she has to live a minimalist lifestyle while she's there um, and when she gets there she hears about the girl who lived in the house before her and she starts to get really interested in what happened to the girl who lived there before and the narrative is split into two different um, sections. You jump between um, the girl who lived there before and the girl who's living there now. And it sort of jumps back and forwards and entwines their stories and you get to figure out what went on in, in the house and um, what happened to it. So this I'm really excited to get reading and um, I've heard some good things about it. So that's The Girl Before by G.P. Delaney. The second book that I've got to mention this week is Marion Keyes' Watermelon. I heard Rose talking about this on her channel and I will link her channel down below if you're not sure who I'm talking about. I used to really enjoy reading um, sort of chiclet style books. Um, I don't know why I quotation that but I just, I don't know, I just don't feel like chiclet is a very... I don't know, it's the... I don't really like the name Chiclet, I don't know why, but that's kind of what it's always uh, put down on, or maybe romance or something like that, but I, I, I'm not sure, but I really enjoy that sort of genre. And I haven't read a lot of it lately because I've been really focused on my thrillers, but when I heard about this one, I had to have it. So this is about a woman who's from Dublin, and she's living in London with her husband, and she has a baby. And just very soon after giving birth, her husband leaves her for an older woman, which is um, somewhat uh, apart from the cliché, it's normally... You normally hear about the husband leaving for the younger woman, but in this time he leaves for an older woman. And so it says that with a baby she doesn't know what to call, a wardrobe, two dress sizes too small, her self-esteem is at an all-time low, and so she goes back to Dublin to her family. So what sounds good is that all of her family are still exactly the same as when she left them, her mum still can't cook, her sisters are still fun, and it sounds really quite a whole woman family set up, and then eventually the husband, James, I think he's called. Yeah, James. So the husband James eventually comes crawling out of the woodwork, comes back and sort of um, and sort of crawls back in shame. And she has to decide whether she actually wants the life that she had in London. Was it really the perfect life, or is she happier now? So I'm interested to give that a go. I have read a Marion Keys book before. Um, I can't remember what it was called, but I read it a few years back, and I remember quite enjoying the writing style, and the story sort of stuck with me a bit. So I'm really interested to see how this goes, and I'm hoping that I get to read a few more along this genre line, because I really like it. Speaking of that genre, I have two more books. 
So this one is Strictly Between Us by Jane Fallon. Um, a few years ago I read Jane Fallon's Getting Rid of Matthew, I think it was called, um, which is really good, um, but I'm going to talk about that one now. But um, So I saw that Jane Fallon had two books on the um, shelf at Tesco, two for £7. Couldn't resist. So this one, Strictly Between Us. So this is about Tams and Michelle, two best friends, and they've been inseparable since they were teenagers. And they spend all of their time together, and they also spend a lot of time with Michelle's husband, Patrick, as well. And so Tamsin hears on the grapevine somewhere that Patrick is having an affair. So she decides that she's going to use her assistant to try and catch her best friend's man in the act. And it says, after all, Tamsin can trust B with anything, can't she? So I'm guessing that maybe perhaps B is the one that's going to end up having an affair with, um... With Patrick and for some reason there is something about um, marriage setups where the husband has an affair and I don't know what it is but it really draws me in every time I see something about that I'm always drawn and I want to know more and so I can't wait to give this a go and yeah so that's Jane Fallon Strictly Between Us and then furthering on we've got My Sweet Revenge by Jane Fallon so this has a very interesting setup I'll just read it to you on the back here it says I want to make my husband fall back in love with me let me explain. This isn't an exercise in 1950s wifedom. I haven't been reading articles in old women's magazines. 20 ways to keep your man, that couldn't be further from the truth. I want him to fall back in love with me so that when I tell him to get the hell out of my life, he'll care. I want it to hurt. It puts me in the mind of Getting Rid of Matthew by, also by Jane Fallon that I read years ago and loved. I've read it a few times. It's one of my favourite um, books in this genre. So it had the things that I like, sort of a marriage falling apart. Not that I like that in real life, but you know, in, in a book I like reading about that sort of thing. And so it's your typical setup, it's your husband having an affair. Um, the couple, Paula and Robert, they've been together since they were at drama school, but Paula gave up her career so that Robert could chase his own. Robert has become a successful actor, but she hears that he's having an affair. So what she wants to do is uh, make him fall back in love with her so that she can dump him basically and make him feel really hurt. So I can't wait to get stuck into this one. So the next two books that I've got are two proof copies from publishers, which I'm really excited about. So the first one is called Sometimes I Lie, and that is by Alice Feeney. Now, this won't look like this when it is um, published. This is a proof copy, so the, I'm expecting the cover will be different when it's actually published. But it's, um, it says, my name is Amber Reynolds. There are three things you should know about me. One, I'm in a coma. Two, my husband doesn't love me anymore. Three, sometimes I lie. So from what I gather, there is a girl called Amber and she wakes up, well, she doesn't wake up. She sort of comes to and she's in a coma, but she can sort of hear what's going on around her. And she is piecing together what went on and how she ended up in the coma. So there's sort of an air of mystery. She can't remember what's happened to her and um, no one seems to actually know what's happened to her either. Her husband is obviously a suspect and it is a case of who did it. But I've read a few pages of this already and I'm really interested in the voice of Amber. There's something about it doesn't seem quite to sit with me very well. So I'm really unsure about what sort of path this is going to take and I'm quite excited to find out what happened to Amber and how she ended up in this coma. So I'll let you know more about this and it is going to be published on the 23rd of March. So I'll have it read before then and I'll let you know my thoughts on it. But yeah, sometimes I lie. Sounds very interesting. And last but by no means least is this one, Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be holding this in my hands. When I found out that this was getting released, I was beyond excited. I love The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins, and I have gone on and on and on about it. And this is the second book, which is coming out in May. So, the excitement levels are high for this one. This is a book about a girl called Nell, who um, is found dead in, in the water, and it is... And people say that she jumped. The official sort of line is that Nell jumped. Um, but a couple of days before her death, Nell had phoned her sister Jules begging for help, but Jules hadn't answered the phone. And now Jules is back in a place that she doesn't want to be, having to look after her sister's teenage daughter because obviously she's dead. But Jules doesn't think that Nell jumped and um, she's scared of where she is. She's scared of being back near the old mill house and um, something about she's got memories of the old mill house and a place that they call the drowning pool. So 
I mean, I'm, I'm, obviously this is not going to be a straight, oh yeah, she has actually jumped because it is a, a thriller. So something will have gone down and um, I'm really interested to find out because I love the writing style of The Girl on the Train. It was so captivating and it really, really held me and I couldn't stop turning the pages. I was up all night reading it. I couldn't turn off and go to bed. I just had to keep reading and reading and reading and I'm hoping that this is going to be the same and I can't wait to start reading it. I'm going to start reading it as soon as I've, um, as soon as I've finished sometime. I lie so I'll have a review on this pretty soon as well but oh, so much excitement right here so let's hope that this video gets uploaded really soon and that my internet gets fixed and that this technician turns up because he's already pretty late and I'm starting to get a little bit irritated so I'll speak to you all soon anyway and uh, if you want to reach me in the meantime on Twitter I'm saying in the meantime by the time you see this my internet will be fixed so that is a bit pointless but anyway reach me on Twitter anyway if you fancy and it's at Rosie Sparkles should you wish to have a chat <laughs> and I'll speak to you all soon bye for now